Whether it's rainy or clear Hi guys, welcome to Timothy Goes to Camp My name is Timothy and we're here at Torch Trail Bible Camp A lot of my friends are going to be joining us today Do you want to guess who I have with me right now? That's right, it's Taylor and Shem Are you guys ready for our day at Torch? Yeah, you bet. I can't wait. Excellent. Today at camp, we're going to go on the zip line. We'll be learning how to read a map. And if we have time, we're even going to go on the pedal cars. Okay, come on. Let's go. I found a Timothy. But guess what? Shem just challenged me to a race on the pedal cars. I'm so excited. I'm very, very fast. So I'm confident that I can probably beat him. His legs are pretty strong, which is what you need on pedal cars. But so are mine. Taylor's going to join us just for fun. So that'll be sweet. I hope we don't leave her too far behind. But before we get to that, it's time to see Phil again. Let's go back to Israel. Hey guys, welcome back. We're continuing our journey through Israel today. My name is Phil, and today I want to talk to you about the Sermon on the Mount. We're going to show you pictures of where Jesus likely did this. You can see that there's rocks for people to sit on. Israel has lots of rocks. They also have lots of this green grass. So people come and they would sit on these rocks and they would listen to the rabbi who was up on a hill so that his voice would travel. And you know, Jesus was likely a very strong speaker as it was because he spent a lot of time speaking but on a hillside a lot more people could hear and this is in the Galilee region like we learned about so the water would have helped him in that as well so Jesus and thousands maybe of people are sitting on this hillside and he gives them this amazing message about what the new kingdom looks like it's not like a normal kingdom it's God's kingdom I hope you can see it better now and visualize what it was like for the people to hear this amazing sermon about this amazing kingdom. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. I'm so glad that Phil is showing us some of his adventure from Israel. I think it would be such a cool place to visit. Have you ever pulled out a map while we've been talking to Phil and looked at Israel? Learning to read a map is such a good idea. You can get paper maps at the gas station or at a bookstore, or you can look up a map online or a GPS on your phone. Do you know how to read a map? Let's look at it together. There are all different kinds of maps that you can look at. The paper ones in an atlas like this are pretty classic. This kind of map is very cool because it shows through the colors the topography. Topography is the shape of the ground, whether it rises and falls and how high. See the purple part? Those mountains have shadows beside them to show that they're very high. 
See the green and yellow parts? The yellow part represents the prairies, and then it turns into the green, which is the Canadian Shield. The green part is mostly forested. The yellow part is mostly fields. Do you remember what these lakes are called? That's right, the Great Lakes. The first thing you want to do on any map is look for the compass rose. Do you know what the compass rose is? Right, it's this part up here that shows which way is north. The next thing to do is figure out where you are. If we wanted to get to Torch Trail Bible Camp, we'd have to figure out where we are. Are we close to Melfort? Or Prince Albert? Or Nipawin? Where are you? You have to figure out where you are in order to figure out how to get to your destination. I think I'm gonna use my map skills to study the race course. I want every advantage I can to beat Shem. What are you going to use a map for? Okay guys, it's time for chapel. Every day of camp, we're gonna spend a little bit of time hearing about Jesus' story and how it overlaps with ours. B-L-E-S-S-E-D B-L-E-S-S-E-D Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. B-L-E-S-S-E-D B-L-E-S-S-E-D and blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be filled. For they will be filled. B L E S S E D. B L E S S E D. Hey guys, Tim here and it's time for chapel. Last chapel, we heard about the time when Jesus healed a blind man. It was a pretty incredible, wasn't it? Today, we're gonna hear a little bit about what Jesus taught his disciples and followers. People had read the words that God had given the people of Israel and they thought they knew what they meant, but Jesus told them that they didn't actually really know what they meant. It kind of turned their world upside down. They thought that it would be the strongest or the mightiest or the richest who would be the most blessed. But Jesus said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. In Jesus' time, and even today, people thought and think that in order to be successful in life, you have to be strong, and you have to push people out of the way to get what you want. But Jesus taught that you have to be meek, which means being quiet and gentle, and then you'll be the most powerful in God's kingdom. Jesus himself worked like this. He is God's son, and it doesn't get any more powerful than that. But he came to earth gently and quietly. Instead of starting a battle to take over, he healed the sick. And instead of defeating sin and death in an obvious way, he let it look like death had actually won. That looks totally upside down, but that's actually completely right side up in his kingdom. Have you ever felt powerless? Have you ever felt so sad that you can't handle it? Maybe you've been bullied, or maybe your family's in a tough spot. In Jesus' kingdom, the king will take very good care of you. Thank you for listening so well in chapel today. And never forget, God made you, and he loves you, and sometimes what looks upside down is exactly what Jesus meant to do. It's face painting time! Since we're talking about the kingdom of the world and how it's different from the kingdom of God, we're going to be doing a globe. So grab your blues and greens. Let's go. And there's a lot of motion in this world. Here we go. I like to do lots of different techniques. This one's called the X technique, like the teacher used to grade my papers. The rosy red cheek circles. Wax on, wax off. Perfect. Let's get some land. Okay, green. Uh, 
to North America, South America, Africa, Asia. Where is Europe gonna be? Wow. Ooh. What do you think? Does it look like a globe? Spinning the globe around. <laughs> well, I'm liking it. Round the globe. Okay guys, it's time for our race. I'm so excited. I've studied my map, I've done some leg exercises, I've got my circulation going, I even had an extra granola bar for energy. I'm ready. Do you think I can win? Yeah, let's go. I'm amazed. Taylor was just with us for fun. And she's not the fastest of us, but she still won. I know it's not the same, but this makes me think of chapel. In God's kingdom, it's not always the strongest and the richest and the mightiest that are the most powerful, the most important in his kingdom. I hope this is a good reminder for you. Or maybe it's the first time you've ever heard it. If you're weak or sad or humble, God is going to take care of you. Thanks for coming to camp today. This wouldn't have been nearly as fun without you. Never forget, God loves you, and he takes care of the weakest people in his kingdom. I wish we could stay longer, but the bus has to go. See you next time. <laughs>